The other night, Don Lemon compared Trump supporters, his friends, to drug addicts, saying that he had to get rid of them from his life and that they had to hit rock bottom so they can finally realize that they're just parroting talking points from state TV. You know, it's really funny about the current state of media. CNN is basically a propaganda arm for the Democratic Party, and basically every other news outlet, for the most part, is as well. And Fox News had a Bernie Sanders town hall and regularly has on Democrats and Trump rags on Fox News all the time. Fox News is not state TV. That's literally what Don Lemon referred to it as. And it is not the Trump supporters who are the addicts in his life. It is Don Lemon himself who has refused to step out of the bubble. But this is the perfect example of the fractured, broken establishment media. And it creates a very interesting effect that some pollsters say will lead to a Donald Trump victory. Now, I don't want to get too much into the Trump stuff because this one, we're going to talk about the media manipulating people's brains. And what really worries me, this idea that if Trump loses, we are going to have truth and reconciliation commissions. And I'm not exaggerating. From NPR, October 11th, healing U.S. divides through truth and reconciliation. And we've heard this from some high profile Democratic activists that the only way to, to heal this country is with truth and reconciliation. Now, it's not as nefarious as a lot of people might frame it out to be. It's not like they're going to round people up and throw them in gulags or something. But they're going to probably take away people's social media accounts. They might shutter their bank accounts. They might cancel them. And now I can already hear the left is saying, Tim's a conspiracy theorist. No, those things have already happened. OK, I am not I am not telling you anything more than is already being done. This is the funny thing about what we can expect to happen and what I think will happen if Joe Biden wins, and the Democrats win the Senate. It's, you know, I got to be honest, the Senate is arguably more important than the presidency, at least in a lot of ways. Maybe not, maybe, maybe there's pros and cons between both, but if Democrats win the Senate, it's going to be a hoot, expanded uh, or rotating Supreme Court. But you've got a lot of people who believe this broken and dejected world. And that's Don Lemon. And that's Chris Cuomo. And I tell you, man, if you're a regular person and you're not paying attention, it might seem like they're telling you the truth. But if you're watching me, then you probably already know. I got to say what these people do and what Don Lemon has said about these Trump supporters, intentional lies. And I'll tell you why. Now, look, I don't know what Don Lemon knows. I know that he once was like um, some organization said he was the worst journalist like in the world or whatever. Like he actually won some fake award for being like the worst journalist of 2016 or something. I can't remember what it was. But Don Lemon may be really dumb. OK, that, that, that might be his thing. I mean, there was that one episode way back when, when where he was like, you know, a lot of people think the missing Malaysian airplane may have been swallowed into like, you know, black holes. I know it's preposterous, but is it preposterous, Mary? And then the lady's like, you know, even a small black hole would swallow the whole universe. Not kidding. That actually actually happened. So sure, Don Lemon was just doing entertainment. Fine. But Chris Cuomo openly lies and we know he's lying because even other journalists had no choice but to accept that he's lying when he said that he didn't break quarantine. We know he did. We have a witness. He talked about it and then later was like, oops. He recently had Tim Murtaugh, communications director for the Trump campaign, on his show, at, well, who called him out and said, you broke quarantine and then pretended to come out of your basement. He goes, not true. Not true. Chris Cuomo was lying to us. Take that. That's a fact. And now look at what CNN is doing. When I watch Fox News, do they lie? To be honest, no, they don't. I think Hannity and, and Laura Ingram can be bombastic. That's about it. You know, look, when it comes to Fox News, and I mean this, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. I just view Hannity and Laura Ingram as kind of predictable. And the talking points come off as, you know, I, I think Ingram is, I, I, in my list, Tucker Carlson's the, their, their best personality. And I think he's straightforward, honest, and he's, he's, he's got his finger on the pulse. He knows, what, he knows what's up. Then you got Ingram, then you got Hannity. I'm not a big fan of any of these late night uh, uh, pundits anyway. So I'm not trying to single out the Fox News guys. But for the most part, they're not, they're not lying. They're just a bit bombastic or emotional or whatever. You turn on Rachel Maddow, you turn on CNN, you turn on NBC News. Wow. That's all I can say. The lies are insane. 
They are losing their grip on the, their ability to manipulate and control the minds of individuals. It was Micah Brzezinski over at MSNBC who once was said straight up on TV that it's our job to tell people what to think or control what people think, something like that. And it's slipping away from them. Don Lemon, maybe Don Lemon is just really that dumb and he doesn't understand why so many people hear different things. And so he says they're addicts who must be purged from, from my life, must get rid of them. And that's how you know you, my friend, and I, we're in reality. Don Lemon says he is not in, he says that the Trump supporters are the addicts who don't live in reality and they have to choose to want to. They have to hit rock bottom. Let me tell you something. Is it you or I who have excised people from our lives who encourage others to excise people from their lives? Why, in fact, no, it's not. We're the side that encourage debate and conversation and open dialogue. And you've got uh, groups like the intellectual dark web, which reigns from progressive to conservative people who challenge illiberalism. That's the real world. But I would be I would be lying if I said that the fake world of the likes of Don Lemon wasn't powerful and massive. And it is. And it's getting more and more powerful. I don't know if you saw my main segment the other day on Glenn Greenwald. He is one of the most consequential journalists of this generation, published the NSA uh, documents, the leaks, and he recently resigned from his own news outlet. To be fair, it's his own fault. Glenn Greenwald is a progressive uh, reporter. He is no fan of Donald Trump, but he has reported honestly on the Democratic Party, Russiagate and all the garbage. He's calling it out and he calls out Trump, too. And he's in Brazil. So he, he's, he's very clearly on the left. He had to resign from his own news outlet. Now, I guess the problem is you should have put in safeguards beyond w- what you had. And, and he had safeguards. But more importantly, these news outlets are letting in, uh, they're letting foxes into the hen house. How is it that the, the Intercept allowed people to work for this company who are now propagandists for the Democratic Party and willfully so? The level of manipulation is just astonishing to me. But I tell you, this, there's something here that may lead to a very serious Donald Trump victory. And again, I'm not going to get too much into it because I'm going to talk about it a, a bit later. But there's, a, there's a, a great article from Politico talking about how what creates shy Trump voters, the, the cultural pressures have gotten 10 times worse, 100 times worse. Back in 2016, you could just say, you know, people didn't want to admit they like Trump. Today, if you do, they will beat you. They will come to your house. They will attack you. They will insult you. They will excise you from their lives. So nobody wants to admit it. And that's the most important thing that needs to be said with the Don Lemon story. Now, I should I should probably read you his quote because I've been ranting for eight minutes. But think about that. High profile and powerful television personalities uh, for all of these big mainstream companies are walking in lockstep. There's one channel with very high viewership, record-breaking historical numbers, Tucker Carlson, that's Fox News. And they've got Brett Baer, who's uh, who's, who's a great reporter. They got Bill Hammer. They're not partisans. Fox News is doing a pretty good job, and I find it's kind of crazy. That's where we're at. But all of the other news outlets, NBC, CBS, ABC, Washington Post, New York Times, CNN, MSNBC, walking in lockstep. And then you hear this. Lemon laments he had to get rid of Trump addicts from his life saying, you know what the sad thing is? And I'll be honest with you. I have many people who I love in my life. And yeah, I come from a red state. I've lived in several red states. There are a lot of friends I had to get rid of because they are so nonsensical when it comes to this issue. They have the whole every single talking point that they hear on state TV and that they hear from this president. They repeat it and they are blinded by it. But here's the thing. I had to get rid of them because they are too far gone. I try and I try and I try. His grievances stemmed from their refusal to believe him when he would browbeat them with suggestions that red states were now the problem in the coronavirus pandemic. They'll say something. They'll say something really stupid. And then I'll show them the science and I'll give them any information. And they still repeat those talking points. And all the while, the state was a hot spot. If you look at the information that we put up last night that came up yesterday, it showed you how the red states have now taken over where the blue states were. People came in because they are bigger cities and there are more transmission, obviously, where there are more people and uh, people are closer together. And so now red states are the problem. 
Of course, there was no mention of how cases were also spiking in New York again, Michigan, Wisconsin, and a host of other blue states. That's not to mention blue states having a higher share of coronavirus deaths per capita. That didn't stop him from comparing Trump supporters to addicts. And I said to get rid of a lot of people in my life because sometimes you have to let them go. And I think they have to hit rock bottom like an addict. And they have to want to get help. They have to want to know the truth. They have to want to live in reality. They have to want to be responsible, not only for other people's lives, but for their lives. While Lemon wasn't sure if he could ever let those people back into his life, it's a really big assumption that they wanted him back in theirs. Cuomo had a similar encounter with failed presidential uh, nominee Al Gore when they discussed the Trump cult during primetime. Cuomo said, as the head of the Climate Reality Project, this is a big part of moral responsibility, uh, of moral responsible. This you guys argue all the time is that, you know, the absence of leadership here will cost people lives and the livelihoods going forward. Isn't that so much more acutely true right now with the pandemic? I don't understand how the president can be responsible for hundreds of thousands of people getting sick in his own communities of followers who are recklessly disregarding the accuracy of messaging in a show of support for him. Al Gore says, yeah, I don't understand it either. Many analysts have used the word cult and the phrase cult like there's so much of a temptation on the part of some of his supporters to want to believe everything he says. And it's tragic that he's letting them down so completely and so utterly. My friends, we are facing very, very trying times and I uh, uh, absolutely do fear for what comes if Donald Trump loses, because these people have been lying. They are blinded by zealotry. They don't bother doing Google searches. They don't actually watch any videos. They have very little evidence for a lot of their claims. Now, I'll tell you, there are certain partisan issues that are silly. The climate change argument, much of what they're going out with Al Gore, is left and right, and it's always been. I remember when I worked for Greenpeace, I was in Chicago and I saw a Glenn Beck book that was arguing something about uh, climate change from a right perspective that was not the perspective held by uh, by the left. And I'm not getting specific because it's been 15 years or something since that, you know, since I remember seeing this, maybe it's 14 or whatever. The point is, there are some things that have always been this way. But right now we have facts and reality. And the reality is there was zero evidence that Brett Kavanaugh had ever done anything wrong. Yet the media ran like a bunch of turkeys gobbling and to go and report, pull up his yearbooks, question, what does it mean that they were drinking beer? This woman with no memory of how she got there, where she was, who was with her, and her friends deny ever knowing what she's talking about. That's enough. That's Brett Kavanaugh. Hunter Biden. Well, we've got a witness who is actually involved in the business dealings with Hunter Biden and Joe Biden and, and, and uh, Rob Walker and all these people, these people who uh, are accused of wrongdoing and were essentially using the Biden name to make money. And Joe was using his kids as intermediaries. It's a huge story. We have evidence and the media won't go anywhere near it. I want to show you what, what scares me first. It's this idea of truth and reconciliation commissions. If Donald Trump loses, a Truth and Reconciliation Commission will seek to destroy evidence and understanding of what really happened in these past four years. They want to erase from the record. That's scary. Do we live in our own world? Are we in control of our own lives? Or are there people in media who are desperately lying because they're propagandists for the Democratic Party and the political establishment? Don't forget, Republican never Trumpers ran full speed to join the ranks of the Democrats in order to support them in their opposition to Donald Trump. A Truth and Reconciliation Commission, in my opinion, is not going to be like a bunch of people being shipped off to gulags. It's going to be them saying like, this is the truth. This is what happened. You need to accept it. You lost. If Trump wins, there will not be truth and reconciliation commissions. And it's kind of scary because people like Don Lemon believe insane things for insane reasons. They don't bother doing any research. A really good example is the other day I was watching Fox News and Juan Williams and it was, it was the five. Jesse Waters was talking with with Juan Williams and they often do this. You know, Juan is their resident left perspective guy. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed in, in Jesse for not pulling up documents and evidence. He should have done this. He should have had it. And, and maybe he didn't expect it to need it. But now you should have it with you next time you go on the show. Juan Williams is like, I read the Wall Street Journal that said there was no role for Joe Biden in these companies. 
It's it's reported. And Jesse just starts laughing. Now, here's the issue I take with it. Juan Williams is he, he doesn't understand. He didn't understand what the news was. The news is not that Joe Biden was secretly working at a company and getting paid. The news is Biden Inc. That Joe Biden's family, family's fortunes have tracked alongside Joe Biden's political career as he rises, and that it is well established now with, with a witness and documents that Joe Biden was receiving equity through his son's name. Of course, Joe Biden wouldn't be in these companies. That's the point. Yet, of course, Juan Williams didn't get it. So he's like, what? And Jesse Waters is just laughing and saying, you know, you really think he's going to put his name on this? That's the point. It's impropriety. It's unethical. It's a, a, a potentially illegal behavior. They would erase all that. Never happened. All fake news. It was all conspiracy. And some people will end up getting excised. And what I mean by that is Proud Boys treatment, like Enrique Tario or Laura Loomer, totally banned from everything, not allowed to use certain platforms, not allowed to use banks. That's what I would expect for a lot of people. I don't know what will happen to, I think for the most part, they'll just start claiming this didn't happen and you'll have to accept it. But I don't know how you get rid of a free press. I don't know if you can. When looking at what happened with Glenn Greenwald, it's really, really fascinating. I have this article from Matt Taibbi who wrote about what happened with Glenn Greenwald and why he left. And the amazing thing is Glenn Greenwald easily outlines. So, so again, Glenn Greenwald, one of the most consequential journalists, not a big Trump fan, easily outlines. And we have the leaked messages easily outlines how there is a double standard at all of these news organizations. And in this instance, The Intercept, he said, when one of the writers at the company wanted to claim that the Hunter Biden story was Russian disinformation, there was no question. They said, publish away, buddy, fire off, fire, fire off the story. When Glenn Greenwald wrote an op-ed arguing there was no evidence it was Russian disinformation, essentially an equal and opposite point, they said, this has got to go through the editorial process. And we're going to have those other people who think it's Russian disinformation edit your story for you. And Glenn said, no. Now, the people at The Intercept are telling uh, uh, people, they put out a statement that Glenn is not really a journalist, that he's lost his way. They say, we admire the journalist he used to be. Let me tell you, what is a cult? Glenn Greenwald gave up his salary, his security, his legal protections, and he's in a country where he is adversarial with Bolsonaro, the, the leader of the country. Glenn Greenwald is taking great personal risk coming out and saying they have become corrupt. And I'll say it. Media in this country has become a propaganda arm for the Democratic Party. The fact that Glenn Greenwald can criticize Trump, but they won't allow him to criticize Biden. The fact that their, their outlet would defend Biden and no one will publish this news. I say no one, but for the most part, these big companies shows you we are in serious trouble if we can't actually have the truth. And if these people win through lying and covering up their tracks, truth and reconciliation really is scary, isn't it? And it's not just NPR that's writing about it. It's been something that's been brought up by, you know, Robert Reich, who's got millions of followers and tons of lefties support him. They say the Trump supporters are a cult. That's what they say. Let me tell you, I don't agree on a bunch of policies that say like Seamus Coughlin, who is a Freedom Tunes who was here uh, just the other day on the IRL podcast. He's religious, uh, Catholic, conservative, uh, pro-life, and we disagree on a ton. And we laugh together and make jokes together and we hang out because that's been my, my experience most of my life. I went to Catholic school for a few years. I left went to public school. I have a ton of friends who come from a ton of different families. I had friends who lived in the suburbs who were very religious. We all got along. We all hung out. And when it came to politics, it was, you know, arguments and grumble, grumble. And we all kind of still believed the same things. Right now, people have the ability to share information, videos like this. We'll see how long that lasts. I don't know. Back then, I, I say back then, but, you know, decades ago, there was just the news media pushing out stories. But here's what's important. Top down news outlets, CBS, NBC, ABC, New York Times, etc., were worried about ostracizing parts of, uh, of their audience if they weren't being fair, because some people would know things. And so that's why I believe news media did a better job a long time ago. Not that they didn't publish fake news. They did. And we're starting, you know, we can start to see behind, behind the curtain. 
But they did a decent job because they were like, if we just come out and say Democrat good, we're going to lose half of our readership to our competition. Well, now competition is nearly infinite. People can choose to enter echo chambers, and they are. Back in the day, you did have left-leaning and right-leaning papers, but people would grab whichever one and read it. Now, you have millions of personalities and channels and outlets, and people are choosing what fits their worldview. In response to this, CNN, MSNBC, The New York Times, well, you know, they're they're all left-leaning, have dug their heels in and gone as hard as possible into supporting their partisan faction, because as far as they're concerned, they already lost the conservative, the conservative or conservative leaning people who would read their paper because these people can choose to watch Fox News or the New York Post, or they can come to, you know, any other any YouTube channel they want that says what they want to say, says, says what they want to hear. So now CNN has isolated its largest faction of supporters, anti-Trump conspiracy theorist cultists, and is feeding them whatever they want. If you come to my channel, I'll tell you this. The polls are against Donald Trump. And he's, he's, he, he seems likely to lose. That's what they're saying. There's reason to believe he might win. Politico has some reporting on this. That, in my opinion, is the most fair assessment I can give you. I'm not going to come out and be like, Trump's going to win and like crash, smash a beer can in my head or something like that. I'm going to try and be honest and say there are reasons to believe he still can win. It's true. Politico writes about it. Mainstream media writes about it. I'm not just going to choose one thing and say, Trump's losing. He's a loser. Biden's going to win. Ha ha. Like some of these people on YouTube do. And we're not going to come out and say, Trump's going to win. Woo. Here's why. Like some other YouTubers do. I'm going to try and do the best to, while I have my bias, I certainly have my, my audience, you know, give you a reasonable assessment. The, uh, to, to be fair, my titling and, uh, you know, my, my, my focus on subject matter typically uh, caters to not a left audience. But that's the important distinction. Not left. Not leftist. What I mean is, friends, let me tell you why you are not in a cult. Now, there are certainly some zealous Trump supporters who act very much like they're in a cult. But most people that I've encountered, at least in this space, that are pro-Trump, angry at the Democratic Party, angry at the mainstream media, come from all walks of life. Pro-skateboarders, Catholic conservatives, agreeing pro-life, pro-choice, liberal economic policy, conservative economic policy many different worldviews saying, we've done the Google searches. We've read the news. We know you're lying. Don Lemon is going to excise people from his life as addicts because he is in the cult. That's what cults do. Now, there may be some Trump supporters saying, get people out of your life, but I don't believe that's the case for for, for the most part. I, I don't want to be an absolutist, but I tell you, man, it is a tendency of the right to come towards the camera to speak. It is a tendency of the left to run and hide. That's why it's been so difficult to book leftists on the IRL podcast. Don Lemon is saying, get these people out of my life. Why? Because they're saying things I don't want to hear from state TV. I watch Fox News. They have Democrats on all the time and they let them just say things. Sometimes the Democrats just lie and Fox News is like, that's them. And I'm really surprised they allow it. CNN, on the other hand, typically just books, you know, well, I don't want to get not family friendly, but a circle of individuals all patting each other on the back. They don't bring on consenting voices. They bring on echo chambers on purpose and then tell you to remove people from your life. Don't join the cult. But watch CNN. See, it's a thing. I remember I did a segment where I said it is imperative that you watch CNN and MSNBC and read The New York Times and also watch channels like mine or you know, Sticks, Hexen- Sticks Hexenhammer or Steven Crowder. And other progressive YouTubers, too, like, uh, uh, you know, Kyle Kalinske, for instance, because you want to get a wide range of political opinions. Around the same time, Brian Stelter on CNN said, don't watch Fox News. Don't watch them. Don't come to me. I'm the only one who can give you the truth. And you get Don Lemon saying, cut the Trumpers out of your life. Don't listen to what they have to say. It's propaganda from state TV. What? You turn on Fox News, I tell you this, you're going to hear opinions that are critical of Trump. And Trump complains about it. Think about that. So look, anyway, I'm not going to go long on this one. We are we are facing something truly horrifying, in my opinion, if Trump and the Republicans lose. And I don't like them. I got to be honest. I don't like Trump and the Republicans for the most part. But at least there is a coalition of regular people with different worldviews who can have conversations. And we are not part of the cult like Don Lemon, because it's the cultists who, who would reject people and kick them out. 
Cultists literally will tell you to remove people from your life who challenge your view. That's a cult tactic. I would never say that. I would say, bring them on in, come on, bring them on over. I've invited leftists to come to my parties. Hang out, man. You know, you're, you're entitled to your opinion. I'll give you one last thought on this. Ken Bone, the famous Ken Bone from 2016, who warmed America's hearts in the Hillary Clinton town hall, announced that he was going to vote for Joe Jorgensen. And he said that the Trumpers were being very nice to him and the Biden people were being extremely mean to him. And that's it. It's unfortunate, but the people on the Trump side are the ones who are like, I hear you, man. You know, I've got friends who are voting third party. I said, I think they should vote Trump. And they said they didn't want to for these and that reasons. And I say, yeah, well, you know, you got to stand up for what you believe. And I respect that. On the other side, they say, if you don't vote for our guy, you are voting for Trump. What is wrong with you? Cultists. So I hope the cult doesn't win because I don't want to see a truth and reconciliation commissioner. Huh? But I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out. And I will see you all then.